Okay, so the third limiting case is hyperbolic equations. So that is when kappa, what we take as the primary driver for the spatial derivative to zero. We also take f equal to zero. We have the equation partial u partial t plus a big U partial U partial X equal to zero. This equation has a very interesting analytical solution. And let's just uh, draw it from MATLAB. So if I, for example, if I take kappa equal to zero and big U equal to one. So I'd like to have somebody again to draw an initial condition and see how the solution evolves. Can we have somebody to draw an initial condition again? Yeah, please. Just quick comments. Yeah, from the interior. Yeah. All right, thanks. So this is the solution to the case where u is equal to 1 and uh, kappa is equal to 0. What we see is a linear translation. The solution keeps the original shape, but just translates towards the right. Can we analyze that also uh, from, the, from the differential equation itself? Huh? We can put Fourier analysis again, that's right. So let's express u again as a function of x and t using a summation. I'm going to uh, not write k it goes from minus infinity to infinity. And then the spatial derivative is going to be operated on e to the i k x only, so we get a i k in front of this, and the time derivative is going to be operated on u k hat only, and we get this, right? So the solution we get is d u hat of k dt. plus i k big u i k big u times u hat of k is equal to zero so this also has the same this is a another ordinary differential equation and the form of this equation is exactly the same as what we have been seeing before. It is u hat of k is equal to u hat of k at time 0 times e to the minus i k t, i k t, or i k u t. So how does this solution look like? It's a sinusoidal oscillation, right? So the solution for every component oscillates in a sinusoidal way. And the period of the oscillation is going to be uh, it's going to be 2 pi over uk, right? So the higher the k, the smaller the period is. And if you can decompose the solution into different Fourier modes, the different Fourier modes would oscillate periodically in different rates. And the higher, the, the slower variation in space is going to also oscillate with slower uh, frequencies in time. 
and the, the composition of all these oscillations forms a linear translation in space. So in fact, you can another way to analyze this is is the fact that this u of x and k x and t can always be written as a function of g of x minus u times t when you take the derivative of this function with respect with respect to time you get minus u times g prime, the derivative of g. You take the same derivative to x, you get just a g prime. The summation of these two, where the space derivative is multiplied by u, is going to give you 0. So this kind of solution is exactly a linear translation in time. OK. So these are the three limiting cases of this convection diffusion equation. And all of these cases can be analyzed pretty easily using uh, analytical methods. And the combination of them becomes quite interesting. For example, if I put a, a big U of 1 and cup of point 0.1, what do you think you are going to see when I draw an initial condition? So it'll be a translation and gradually becomes a constant. Let's see that. Okay. That's perfectly right. There is a advection towards the right, but during that advection, it becomes smoother and smoother and ultimately becomes a constant. And we can try different things. We can put it as 0.01, and we should see the same speed of translation, but the speed where it goes to a constant should be decreased. So we can see that now it maintains this oscillatory wave for a bit longer. And when we draw a different U, a u of equal to 10, for example, what should we see in this case? I'm trying to draw the same initial condition. We see the translation becomes a lot faster, right? What if we draw a negative u in this case? Minus 2. What do you think is going to happen? The translation goes towards the left. OK, and uh, I think you had a question, what if we put a negative kappa? Let's try that. Minus 0 0.1. Huh? Oop, it didn't even allow me to draw this. That shouldn't happen. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's what happens when you have uh, instability. OK, so, so things become. OK, so let's try that. Like that? I never tried it, so let's see how it goes. So I do see something before it goes <laughs> before it goes to infinity. So okay, the thing to remember is that this minus point would have a how many zeros? One is multiplied by k square, and k when you discretize when you discretize a continuous signal using Fourier series. The, the largest k can be pretty large, right? So, so let's say if you have if you have a thousand grid points distributed across 
the spatial domain from 0 to 2 pi. Then the largest k can be on the order of like a thousand. And this thing, no matter how small, is multiplied by k squared. And for the largest k, even though this one is small, you should expect to have a very fast uh, divergence to infinity. So if we have a very smooth initial signal, we might be able to see it. That's a good point. If we have a very smooth initial signal, Oh, I think I may not be able to draw it smoothly exactly at the boundaries. <laughs> Sorry, I think I think because it's periodic, so usually uh, the discontinuity at the boundary is going to introduce some high frequency components, even though I draw it very very carefully. So it's uh, pretty difficult. <laughs>